am never going to jump around on stage. It, it, it just is not my personality. Introversion is a big part of our fear of being seen. And a lot of people will say they are introverted. And what we learn in, in psychotherapy and, and NLP and all these other modalities, if you will, is that the tendency to be introverted stems from being constantly critiqued somewhere in your youth, either critiqued, criticized, put down, whatever it is. How big do you think that gets? And do you think that that's something that you can address with these solutions you're talking about today? I agree with what you said, Anna, but I also have a slightly different take on it. Um, and you recommended a book. The name is escaping me right now. Um, the courage to indigo adults, oh. indigo adults. There we go. I believe I was born an introvert. I believe I was born a highly, they call it HSI. No, no. highly sensitive. I forget Individual? what the I stands for. Um, but I consider myself a high, I was told I was nervous and too sensitive. Um, and that, then the criticism came in because mm. I was different than the other children. Now, where that led is that I found my solace in books. Now I have lovely childhood friends who lived on either side of us in this small town in Western Pennsylvania. And I'm still friends with each of them to this day. So they were good friends. They were good. I had a wonderful, I mean, we think about the 1950s growing up. It's a different world once again than it is today. Wonderful childhood. But because of this sensitivity, I would find my solace in books. I remember hiding underneath my mother's sewing machine or crawling up on a little ledge that she had in her cedar closet. And my imagination, which, you know, who knows if it was really my imagination or whether I was making contact with other souls, that was my very vibrant imaginary life. Being criticized for that then, and being criticized for not being able to be like other kids certainly played into that. But I think besides the role of being criticized, it's who I was born as. And we cannot change who we were born as. And it's more important to look at what are our strengths. And my strengths came from being able to tap into things that I could feel and see that other people couldn't. My world was so rich, rather than following the more linear, do this this way all the time, do it right. Favorite poem of mine that I used to read at all of my um, personal gatherings when I would bring people in, we called it um, creating the life of your dreams back then, because that's really what I'm about. And it's called Wild Geese by Mary Oliver. If you don't know her, go look for her books, her poems. Um, if you do know her, then just sit back and enjoy these first few words that I'm going to read. And again, it's the poem, Wild Geese. You do not have to be good. You do not have to walk on your knees for a hundred miles through the desert, repenting. You only have to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. And it says, tell me about despair, yours, and I will tell you mine. Meanwhile, the world goes on. Meanwhile, the sun and the clear pebbles of the rain are moving across the landscapes, over the prairies and the deep trees, the mountains and the rivers. Meanwhile, the wild geese, high in the clear blue sky, are heading home again. Whoever you are, no matter how lonely the world offers itself to your imagination, calls to you like the wild geese, harsh and exciting, over and over announcing your place in the family of things. We want to be what somebody else says we need to be. We want to be who we think we're supposed to be for our family, for our audience, for our friends, in order to be an influencer. You know, we can go on and on with that list when all the world needs 
is for you to be the person that you were born to be and to let the soft animal of your body love what it loves. My dog Red here, he loves to run, but he'll never be a horse. You know, a horse will never be a fish. A fish will never be a chipmunk. You know, we could go on with the animal world or the, the, the plant and flower world. We are all unique. And I mm -hmm. think the, the minute we begin to embrace that and love that about ourselves, just say, I don't really care whether somebody likes what I have to say or not. It's important to me. It's important to my audience. It's how I'm serving people. Mm -hmm. And it, you don't have to be somebody on a soapbox because I don't think I'm that type of person. I think I'm a much softer, gentler style, but I do know what I stand for. But it's easier said than done, right, Susan? The, and even oh, why absolutely. people are here today. Because absolutely. that whole... This, this is not an easy button, but the things but that are important to us never are. I mean, you you're married and you have children and... I'm sure that you would say it's not easy to be a parent. It's not easy to be in a healthy relationship while you're building multiple businesses along the way. Nothing is easy, but if it, if it, if it fits your values, if that's something that's important to you, you're going to do the hard things to make it happen.